does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today I'm back again for another special Kickstarter preview. Today I'm very excited to be checking out Bring Out Your Dead from Ginger Ale Games. This is for two to five players, ages, let's say about 13, 14 and up, and it'll take you about 40 minutes to play. And in Bring Out Your Dead, this is a worker placement game where you are going to be trying to put all of your dead family members into the graveyard, and hopefully they won't fall into the river because, well, if your dead family gets into the river, that's negative points for you. What the heck am I talking about? Let's open it up and see how it works. Okri dokri, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Bring Out Your Dead. First and foremost, I want to mention this is the promotional copy I have in front of me, the copy that gets to you very well may look differently. In particular, I think the rule booklet is going to look uh, slightly different. Uh, that being said, though, let's get to the handy dandy rule booklet. It is fantastic. It is a very, very well done rule booklet. When I got this, I was like, ooh, this might be confusing. The rule booklet held my hand the entire way. Very, very well done rule booklet. So what are you going to be doing in Bring Out Your Dead? You're going to be placing your graves, because you're going to have, uh, <clears throat> you're going to be placing your coffins, excuse me, you're going to have singles and doubles. You're going to be placing them in various different grave plots all over the board, trying to score the most points. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points is going to be the winner of the game. There's a lot of different ways to earn points, uh, so let's go to the components, then we'll get into the gameplay. <clears throat> so first and foremost, we're going to take a look at the board because it is, is really nicely done. It's beautiful. It looks like it might be cluttered, but it's not once you know what's going on here. So all around the board, there's going to be various different grave sites. The low and high of this is if you have your, uh, your coffin in this spot right there at the end of the game, you're going to score four points, five points, four points, so on and so forth. But there's various other different kinds of grave plots, like there's ones that'll say couples only. That means that you have to put a double coffin in those spots, and they're going to be worth more points, obviously. Over here, we have a mass grave. It's only going to be worth one point if you put your coffins in there, but you also get to draw a card from the sides, uh, from the sides of the board, which are fate cards and treasure cards, but we'll get more to those a little bit later. Uh, the last thing I want to mention about the board is, oh, there's two more things, is that there's going to be various different spots over here which will give you points if you have the majority at the end of the game. So if you have the majority of graves on this spot right here at the end of the game, in these six spots, then you are going to get plus ten points at the end of the game, which could be a pretty big swing. Uh, swing? Also, it says right here all po grave points are going to be worth three points, and that's in addition to the plus ten if you get it. Over here, as you can see, it's going to go three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven. So it's going to be ascending. So you don't want to be the first one there, but you definitely want to be the last one there. Now, the last thing I want to mention is the river, which is in the middle. And occasionally, what's going to happen is there's not going to be enough room for your co uh, the, for your coffins on the cart that are going to be going into the graveyard. This will all make sense a, a lot more in a couple minutes. But what will happen is if there's not enough room on that cart, then boop, your uh, unfortunately, your loved ones are going to be going into the river, which at the end of the game, if you can see it down here, is going to be negative points. And if you get a lot down there, it could be really big amounts of negative points. So that is the board. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but there is a uh, there's, this is double-sided. There's a two- or three-player board, and then there's a four- and five-player board. So next, we're going to get to the cards. Now, first, you're going to start off with some cards. You're going to start off with a two, a three, a five, a six, and a seven. Now, the 7-1, when you play this, what's going to happen is you are going to be able to put one of your one uh, single coffins onto this guy's cart, which we'll get into in a minute, because that's what it looks like. Uh, the 6 will let you put a double in there. The 5 will let you put a single in there. The 3 doesn't do anything, but if you're able to combine both the 2 and the 3, you'll get to draw a Fate card, which is a special card, which we'll get to next, in fact. So over here, we're going to have our Fate deck, and, and as you can see, there are, there's a lot of stuff to pay attention to on these cards, and I'll go over what exactly you need to pay attention to. So this one's a good one. Rich Uncle DeVerl, what you want to pay attention to is this number up here, 8, because everyone's going to be playing these cards out in front of them. You're going to play three cards out in front of you, and the highest number is going to go first. Then whoever is the first player is going to go first based on their number, and then clockwise. This is the first player marker. I do want to point it out before I forget. It's very cool, uh, I must say. So, as you can see, Rich Uncle DeVerl, you play this, you're probably going to put your, you're, you're probably going to get a play, because, as I mentioned earlier, it was a 7, 6, 5, 3, and 2. 
but these special cards are normally going to be a little bit higher. What this is going to let you do is going to have this symbol right here, and you're like, oh, I don't know what this symbol means. Well, luckily for you, everyone is going to get one of these cards right here, and as you can see, there is a lot of symbology on these cards. Luckily, and the, this is double-sided by the way, uh, it's a very straightforward symbology and once you play the game a couple times you're probably going to know what everything does. Uh, it's kind of like Race for the Galaxy where the first couple times you do it you're going to be like, what's going on here? But once you get the gist of the game you'll be like, oh yeah, that does this and that does that. Uh, this one in particular though is going to let you uh, place one of your coffins onto this little cart right here, which is very, very good, because if you play an 8 and everyone else only plays 7s, then you're going to be guaranteed to get on your cart, because as I mentioned, if there's not enough room on the cart, then your coffins are going to go in the river, which means negative points and bad stuff happening. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of these that are going to do various different things. As you can see, they all have different symbols, uh, and, and so yeah. Another thing to pay attention to is right here. This is going to tell you if you can do it to a single coffin or a double coffin or potentially both because I mentioned there's singles and there's doubles. So for instance, this save from the river card, which is pretty self-explanatory, it means you're going to be able to take uh, one of your coffins out of the river, is for double coffins or for single coffins, whereas this vampire card is only for single coffins. So that's another thing to pay attention to. The last two things you want to pay attention to are down on the bottom left. This means you're going to gain six points instantly once you play this card. Only when you play it, you're going to gain those six points. And this two down here means there's 30 fate cards, and there's only two of these cards in that deck. So this is a very, very good card. In fact, this card lets you immediately just put one of your uh, coffins into the graveyard. So this is actually a fantastic card. So those are the fate cards. They're going to be over there on this side, and you're going to be getting those in your hand and playing them. Uh, one thing I want to mention is once you play a fate card, it gets discarded and you don't get it back. These other cards, the 2, 3, 5, 6, and 7, you'll get these and put these back in your hand every single time you use them. So those are the fate cards. Those are the cards that are going to be in your hand. Uh, over here we have jewelry. jewelry uh, or Actually, it's called treasure. And these are going to be the green cards, and these are going to be a good way to earn a lot of points. Uh, so, for instance, there's going to be a little bit of set collection, like this rosary right here. If you have zero, you, uh, one, you get zero points. But if you have five of these, you're going to get thir or, what is that? 32 points, which is a lot of points in the grand scheme of the game. Uh, you're going to have diamonds, which when you play it, you'll gain four points. But in addition, it's going to let you score two points for every fate card you have in your hand. Uh, you'll have rings and you'll have various different other things to collect. Uh, this is a good way to get a lot of points. So those are the treasure cards over there and you're going to be able to draw some of those and keep them in your hand. Uh, some of them will score you points immediately, some of them will score you points at the end of the game. So let's get back to this card up here because I mentioned this cart. Uh, this cart is, it looks a little bit tricky, but it's really not. Essentially, this is going to tell you how many coffins that you can have on this cart. So in a two-player game, you can have one, two, three coffins on here, but the fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh coffin are going to go plop down into the river and people are going to gain negative points. So another thing I want to mention about when you get tossed in the river is that even though you get tossed in the river, oh, it's all is not lost because you are going to gain an additional card based on where the cart is. Because the first player person, whoever has this, is going to be moving the cart to whichever side of the graveyard they would like to move it to. They get to decide and then everyone else, uh, once they play their coffins on there, so let's say, uh, let's pretend we're in a two-player game and you know, somebody plays uh, this, and this, and this, and, well, okay. We've got that, and then one guy gets thrown in the river. Whatever. Uh, you're going to be putting all of these uh, coffins on this side of the board. So once you've played your cards, once you've taken care of your fake cards and your various different special abilities, what you're going to do now is you're going to be taking your little tombstones and placing them on the board. So you might say, okay, I'm going to play it to right here because I want to have this majority bonus at the end of the game and then this guy would say well this is a no-brainer this one has 11 points over here so I'm gonna go for that one and then you would do say this 8 points and then you're going to discard this because you're not going to need it anymore <clears throat> and that's about it you're gonna keep doing this for either 8 rounds or until someone uses all of their coffins once that occurs uh, what's going to happen is you're going to tabulate all the points that are on the board based on you know the uh, the, the various different uh, majority bonuses and all the different numbers like the fives and the fours and whatnot, 
and you're going to see who has the most points. Whoever has the most points is going to be the winner of Bring Out Your Dead. And that, in a very loose, jumbled kind of nutshell, is how Bring Out Your Dead is played. Alrighty then, Bring Out Your Dead from Ginger Ale Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, the game is not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. First, it is a worker placement game. If you're not into worker placement games, this one might not be for you. Also, this is an incredibly morbid game. It's about, you know, putting coffins into grave sites of your, your dead family and hoping they don't fall into a river, which is definitely going to be a turnoff for a lot of people. Last but not least, the two-player game is just okay. Um, the three-player game is good. The four- and five-player game is really where this game hits its stride and really where I, I liked this game an awful, awful lot. But why didn't I like the two-player game? Mostly because that the round where you have to put down the three cards at the very beginning. In a two-player game, I did it like four times where I just played a two and a three and I drew a fake card. And that's not fun. I don't want to keep continuing to have to draw fake cards. It just seemed like in a four and five-player game, you have a lot more options on what you're going to do. And I like that a lot more. Uh, moving on to the pros, though, I really, really enjoyed this game. I, I got the game in the mail, and I looked at the board, and I was like, ooh, I hope this rule booklet is good. And let me assure you, this is an absolutely fantastic rule booklet. Um, and I just wanted to mention that, because it, it's great. This game could have been... It could have been dicey. The rule booklet was not well done, and this rule book is well done. But what else do I like about the game? I like the artwork a lot. I like the kind of the tongue-in-cheek nature with the ghouls and whatnot. I like that quite a bit. The board is absolutely gorgeous. Not in like a beautiful artwork sort of sense, but in a graphic design sense. There's a lot going on in this board, and hats off to their graphic designer because it does not look cluttered at all. I like the board an awful lot. I like the point track around the board. I liked how the jewelry and the fake cards worked. I like the fake cards because you'd get some good cards and you'd be like, oh, I'm going to be able to jump in front of everybody with this card and do some cool special ability. And there was tons of different special abilities you could just phew, unleash on people. Uh, I liked the helper card. The helper card was, it was a godsend. Without the help card in this game, I honestly don't think I'd recommend this game at all. Because there is so much symbology in this game, but it's not hard symbology to learn, which is another good thing that I liked about the game. Uh, the jewelry card, as I mentioned, I like those a lot because some you play during the middle of the game and they would give you points just, just then and you could say, oh, I bumped up 10 points right there. Awesome. But then there were, there were some, the, the, what was it, the, the rings and the jewelry and the, the other stuff that you would hold on to at the end of the game, especially if you, you've drawn them secretly. You can accumulate a lot of points doing that. Uh, another thing I really liked was the river mechanic, how sometimes you get bumped into the river, and if you get a lot of your coffins into the river, people kind of forget about you, and they say, oh, he's totally going to lose. But there's cards that will let you take things out of the river, and if you hoard those cards, and I can say this from personal experience, you can really surprise people in like the last two rounds and be like, oh yeah, I'm out of the river, out of the river, out of the river, and they're like, wait, what's going on? And then you drop like 35, 40 points worth of jewelry, and you win the game. I'm talking from personal experience. Uh, I did like that, that there's a couple different ways to win. You can really focus on trying to get the best grave sites. You can focus on trying to manipulate things at the last second or doing the jewelry. Uh, if you could not tell, I really enjoyed Bring Out Your Dead. If you were in the market for a very, very fun game night worker placement game, this is definitely one you should probably check out. It's on the Kickstarter link down below once they get the Kickstarter up and running. Uh, enjoyed it, definitely highly recommend it. That's Bring Out Your Dead from Ginger Ale Games. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And also in the comments below, let me know what is your favorite worker placement game. For me personally, uh, I think it's Kingsburg, but I like this one an awful lot. That was the review for Bring Out Your Dead. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.